welcome to the Worker Cooperative. A worker co-op is not the same as an ordinary job. It involves cooperation, democratic decision-making, co-ownership, and equality with others. So let's go over the basics. We've all heard the term worker co-op before, and maybe you even joined one. But what does it actually mean? And how does it work? A worker cooperative is a business that is owned and run jointly by its worker members who equally share the profits, benefits, and responsibilities. Being a member of a co-op is different from being a member at a gym, for example. In a co-op, membership means co-ownership. Worker co-ops are unique. While a traditional business is owned by a person or a corporation that is structured to maximize owner profit, a worker co-op is owned by the workers, where they get to democratically make decisions and share equally in the profits. This makes all the difference. At its root, a worker co-op is usually organized as a cooperative corporation or a limited liability company, also called LLC. This is done to protect individual workers from liability. Successful worker co-ops are found in just about every industry, engineering, house cleaning, agriculture, childcare, filmmaking, landscaping, bakeries, bicycle shops, manufacturing, virtually any business can be organized as a co-op. But no matter what worker co-op you join, it will be organized around a set of basic principles that make them very different from your everyday corporation. For example, a worker co-op is established on the basis of democracy and equality and designed to be an enduring source of worker empowerment rather than a regular business that is often established for the benefit of a few. That's why a co-op welcomes new members, but also allows people to leave if and when they decide to. It is also why the buy-in price is not based on market value of the entire business. Instead, the buy-in for new members remains stable as the business grows. As member owners, workers share both the responsibility and the benefits of running a business. Decisions such as work structure, wages, and benefits are made democratically. This structure encourages business growth because when your business prospers, so does everyone in a co-op. When people feel personally invested in the success of the business, they tend to make better decisions because that's what leads to better pay, benefits, stability, and everything else that makes a job worthwhile. So how do co-op members ensure that decision-making is smooth, efficient, and democratic? Well, they elect a board of directors. Their job is to set policies and solve challenges. In a small co-op, all members are often on the board of directors. Co-ops also often hire a manager to coordinate and oversee work. This person can be a member of the co-op or an outside manager. The manager's job is to help the business be effective and profitable. This includes enforcing rules established by the workers. What about payment? How do co-ops pay their worker members? Well, just like in a traditional business, every worker in a co-op gets a wage that can be hourly or monthly, but co-op members also share the year-end profit. This type of profit sharing is called patronage and is different from profit distribution in traditional corporations. For example, if you own shares of stock in Microsoft, your portion of the profit is tied to your monetary investment. In a co-op, your share of profit is tied to your participation as a patron. So it's not about how much money you invested, but rather about your contribution to the greater whole. 
The most common way to allocate patronage is by the hours you work, but there are some co-ops that tie it to the wages earned, length of membership, how many members joined after you, or any combination of those factors. Either way, patronage is established to ensure that your contributions are acknowledged and accounted for fairly. This sounds pretty great. So how do I become a member? At first, you begin working as a candidate. If the co-op is organized as an LLC, you immediately become an owner, not an employee. But you'll have to go through a process to increase your privileges and compensation. If it's organized as a cooperative corporation, you start working as an employee and go through a process to become a co-owner. In either case, there's a period of candidacy. This allows new members to decide whether they want to become a co-owner and allow current owners to decide whether they think the same. The candidacy process is explained in the co-op governing documents and it usually includes working with the co-op for a particular amount of time, having positive evaluations from other members, and being voted into the co-op by those members. That way, each co-op member has an opportunity to grow and participate in decision-making. What about dues or financial contributions? While worker cooperatives almost always require a financial contribution from its members, they do not collect any dues. The initial contribution is called a buy-in, or a share price. Purchasing a co-op share contributes to the overall stability of the co-op. It's easier to prosper when everyone is invested and everyone is sharing the financial responsibility. The total share price is usually stated in the co-op's governing documents, and it's rarely expected to be paid in one payment. Typically, members pay the amount over time, and often through payroll deductions. If you decide to leave the co-op, the share price amount is returned. Additionally, this amount is not tied to the financial value of the business and is kept reasonable to welcome new members. This preserves the equality aspect of a co-op giving all members a fair chance to equally contribute and equally share in the success. So being a co-op member is basically like wearing two hats, a worker and an owner. As a worker, you are paid to perform the job to the best of your ability, but you also want positive working conditions, meaningful work, fair treatment and benefits. As an owner, you make decisions to assure that your business is profitable today and in the future so that everyone has secure employment and good pay. You also get to equally share in the prosperity of your business. This cooperative, balanced approach has proven to be beneficial to workers time after time and has helped transform our relationship to work as one built on reciprocity. Essentially, a cooperative is similar to how nature does things. Creatures work together to the benefit of a vibrant ecosystem. They are mutually beneficial to each other. From earthworms to trees and plants to insects and animals and even human beings. And just like in a cooperative, they all get to share in the bounty they helped create.